All right, so let's talk a bit more about conservation of energy. Our fundamental equation we have for conservation of energy looks like this. So potential energy is U. We have two types of potential energy, gravitational potential energy and spring potential energy. Uh, spring potential energy is also referred to as elastic potential energy. K is our kinetic energy. That is the energy an object has simply because it is moving. So right now we're still talking the particle model, meaning we're considering everything as if it's a dot. So we're not talking about rotation yet. In chapter 12, we'll get talking about rotational motion and talk about the kinetic energy involved when something is rotating as well. Potential energy and kinetic energy together are called mechanical energy. Work external is the transfer of energy due to external forces. Now, ultimately, we mean not gravity because we are accounting for gravity in the potential energy term, not a spring because we, again, are accounting for any spring forces and the energy uh, in relation to the potential energy and not kinetic friction. So not kinetic friction because we're accounting for that in the delta E thermal. So thermal energy, I'll write it over to the side. Thermal energy is generated as an object slides on a surface. And so we will be accounting for thermal energy uh, the work done by kinetic friction in terms of the thermal ge energy generated. So work external means forces like tension or a push or pull that is not gravity spring or kinetic friction. So we do still have to consider forces acting on our system during motion. But if there is no gravity, no spring, no friction, then the equation will simplify down nicely. So let's talk about a couple situations where we can say that mechanical energy is conserved. So mechanical energy simply means the sum, the total of the potential energy and kinetic energy together. So, for example, let's say we toss a ball in the air. And we're going to ignore drag still for same reasons. If this ball has an initial velocity, <coughs> we've talked about throwing a ball in the air. This is a concept called free fall. It on, the ball itself experiences only the acceleration due to gravity. <coughs> Excuse me. We know that as the ball goes up, it will slow down and slow down and eventually reach a maximum height. At that highest point for that instant, the velocity is zero. And the ball then, of course, is headed back down, speeding up on the way down. Kinematic equations totally apply. We know the acceleration. But I want to talk in terms of energy. 
The two types of energy that would be involved in this situation are kinetic energy. The kinetic energy is maximum initially because as far as the ball being in the air, the fastest time it's, the fastest it's going is when it's released or right before it's caught. So this kinetic energy initially depends upon the mass of the ball and how fast the ball is traveling. The kinetic energy will decrease because the speed of the ball is decreasing. But everywhere except for the maximum height, the kinetic, the ball, excuse me, will have kinetic energy. The kinetic energy will be zero at the very top, simply because that split second, the velocity is zero, and the kinetic energy is biggest at the bottom. Now, potential energy, the only type of potential energy in this particular example would be gravitational potential energy. And that's the energy stored because of the interaction between the ball and the Earth. We know the Earth is attracting the ball. The closer, well, that's not entirely true. So never mind that step. When we say potential energy, gravitational is mgy similar to our kinematic equations we could choose an origin to be wherever we wanted it to be we can totally choose y to be zero initially if we do that we're just defining this lowest point to be a point of zero gravitational potential energy, which is fine. As the ball continues upwards, the height y is getting bigger and bigger. At each intermediate step in here, the ball, this system, will have both potential energy and kinetic energy. But as the height y gets bigger, v gets smaller. At the very top, the gravitational potential energy will be mgy, but this y value will be the maximum height. It, the ball won't go any higher than that because that is limited by the amount of kinetic energy it was given when it was thrown. Now, in the case where we're ignoring drag, which we're going to continue doing, because there's no external forces, the only force while the ball is in flight in the air, the only forces affecting its motion are gravity or is gravity, I should say. There's only the acceleration due to gravity. So our conservation of energy equation on top simplifies to be just this mechanical energy initially equaling the mechanical energy finally, which is a very nice simplification. We could substitute in our individual equations for potential energy and kinetic energy. And notice, since both potential energy and kinetic energy have m, mass, in the equation, the mass will cancel. Now, when we have initial and final in here, so we have a subscript I on the left side, subscript F on the right side, all we're doing is we're relating the energy at any two given moments in time. They can be any two moments. 
One of them should be a moment in time where we know something. So for example, if we knew this initial speed and we wanted to find the maximum height, I would choose initial, what I meant by initial in my uh, conservation of energy equation, I would make that where the ball left the person's hand and final up at that maximum height. If that's the case, then following along with this choice of the lowest point being y equals zero, we could zero out that term that has y initial in it. At the maximum height though, v final is zero. And so this actually allows us to simplify even more. And we would be able to say the final height or that maximum height the ball traveled to depends on how fast it was traveling <coughs> and the acceleration due to gravity, 9.8. If we went back and reviewed kinematic equations, this is essentially the form we would end up seeing. So we're just seeing another way to look at uh, sorry, motion in a new concept in terms of energy. If I wanted to know how, so again, knowing V initial, maybe I wanted to know the speed when Y is half its maximum value. So somewhere in the middle. So maximum value was all the way up here. So halfway in between, what would the speed be? Now we would need to know what the maximum height was. We could easily calculate it from this individual uh, right-hand section we just talked about. But we could go ahead and say, well, initially, I'm calling that lowest point where the ball is released, y equals zero. So I'm just defining no potential energy there. Let me write it this way, actually. So I'm defining the initial point to be y equals zero. So just, that's a reference. We're just saying no potential energy initially. All the energy is kinetic, and halfway up, there will be potential energy because we're at, at some vertical height, y final, above where the ball started. So the Earth has allowed that gravitational force, has slowed the ball down, meaning given it some potential energy but it still has kinetic energy at that point as well. So what we see is just energy transforming between potential and kinetic. To get a bit of a visual, I pulled this picture from our book. So this picture right here, they're showing on the top row, the ball is traveling upwards this represents the initial velocity. At some point in between, there is another velocity. It's not as big, the ball will have slowed down some. At the maximum height, the velocity is zero for that split second. And then of course the ball continues on down. This middle row is called an energy diagram. We're graphing energy versus vertical height. Well, since gravitational potential energy, MGY, the mass is not changing. It's the same ball the whole time. G is not changing, but Y is changing. Y means vertically how high it is. This graph is defining that initial height, that lowest height, as y equals zero. 
And so this PE, potential energy, this line with that positive slope represents this MGY. At any given Y value, this is the potential energy. At this Y value, this is the potential energy. At this exact point, that's all potential energy. So TE on this graph means total energy. That's the total mechanical energy. It represents the potential plus the kinetic energy. As we saw before, because we're ignoring drag, there's no other forces that are affecting the motion of the ball. This total energy is staying constant. And that's why on this graph, it is a horizontal line. It's not changing. So the point where the potential energy graph intersects with the total energy graph is the maximum height. Now they've drawn the blue line, the potential energy line traveling further, because theoretically we could draw a straight line going on forever to represent MGY. In terms of the problem itself, any part of the potential energy beyond the total energy is irrelevant to the problem. So you can pretend it doesn't exist. So the bottom row, they're showing you bar charts. Just to give you kind of another way to visualize what's happening. So when we say that the lowest point, we're just defining that as no gravitational potential energy, all of the energy, all of this total energy is in the form of kinetic energy initially. On the graph, this portion above the potential energy curve is the kinetic energy. As the potential energy is increasing, the kinetic energy is decreasing. The kinetic energy is getting smaller and smaller and smaller until at the maximum height, the kinetic energy is zero. When potential energy equals the total energy, the kinetic energy is zero. And this equation shows us that. If this potential energy equals the total energy, then K, the kinetic energy, must be zero. Otherwise, that statement of, uh, sorry, this statement of total energy would not be valid. So as we move across the screen in this segment two, the ball is not at its maximum height. It looks like it's approximately halfway up. If it's halfway up, MGY, if Y is half, then we have half potential energy. Half the total energy is potential energy. And then the other half of the total energy has to be kinetic. Continuing onwards, this third step is representing the ball is at its maximum height, so it's all potential energy, zero kinetic. The ball comes back down in the last step. We're back to half and half. Now, if the ball was somewhere in between, not exactly half and half, maybe this far, it would be traveling faster than VB, but slower than VA, we would have a bar graph where the potential energy is small and the kinetic energy is bigger. So K and U, but they still need to add up to be the same total energy. So they would add up to be equivalent to either one of these bars. 
So the one on the left represented when the energy was all kinetic. This middle one represents when the energy is all potential. So the total energy, if we add these two together, they add up to give us the same total. So that's why we call this conservation of energy. The total amount of energy is always there. It's not leaving. The only way to remove energy from the system is to have some sort of external force doing work or to have some sort of thermal energy being generated. So transforming into that thermal energy. So conservation of energy actually ends up being a really nice, simple way, and simple is a relative term, but a nice way to relate speeds and heights together.